All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is go over composition of functions. And I want to do that by going over a easy, a medium, and a hard. Now, this is actually going to be quite a bit of work if you are not familiar with compositions of functions. So therefore, to try to simplify this video, I am only going to focus on f of g of x. So a lot of times we can write it like this, sometimes called the fog function, which is basically just saying we're going to take the g of x function and plug it into our f of x function, all right? So you can see I wrote the g of x function below, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug that into the input value of our f of x function. So the input value in all of these functions, trying to keep things consistent here, is going to be x. There is gonna be some algebra, and that's really what differentiates the easy, medium, and hard, because the process of compositions of functions is exactly the same. Just like if I was to say f of one, right, you would replace x with one. If I said f of zero, you would replace x with zero. If I said g of two, you would replace two with x. So whatever is inside your function, that is what is going to replace on your input value. So in this one here, you can see we have the binomial 2x minus one for g of x, and we're gonna plug that into our f of x function. So I'm gonna do a little bit of mental math. So if you need to go ahead and work this out on your own, feel free to stop the video, pause it, keep me honest, make sure I don't make any mistakes, but I am going to multiply some of this in my head just to kind of not have to show so much work because everything else. But anyways, two X minus one, that is going to, that's a binomial squared. So remember that's two X minus one times two X minus one. So therefore, if you were to multiply those out, and maybe I can show my work in a little bit, but that would be, or on a sidebar, we'll see how much more room I have left. That is going to give me a 4x squared, and then I'd have a 2x times negative 1 would be a negative 2x, 2x times negative 1, negative 2x. You're going to add those two up, that'd be a negative 4x, and that's plus 1. So let's see here, we've got a 3 times a 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And then here, you can apply a distributive property, I can show my work there. That is going to be a minus a 4x plus 2 minus seven, I'll do the simplifying at the end. Here, I have distributed property. Make sure it's very important to leave these in parentheses because this three, you need to multiply by everything. So three times a four X squared, that's going to be a 12 X squared. Three times negative four is a negative 12 X. Three times one is going to be a positive three. And then we have a minus a four X and then two minus a seven is going to be a negative five. All right, it would have really wasn't that bad. So now I can combine these two because those both have X's, they're like terms and I can combine these two. So therefore I have a 12 X squared. Let's see, that's gonna be negative 12 X minus four X is a negative 16 X. Three minus five is going to be a negative two. So now that I actually do have some work, let me just show you that. So let's see, two X minus one quantity squared equals a two X minus one times a two X minus one. All right, so what I was basically doing was apply my FOIL. So therefore that's a four X squared minus a two X minus a two X plus one. And that's where I got the four X squared minus a four X plus one. Actually, I think I worked this out, didn't I? I did work this out. Okay, cool, I got the answer right. All right, now the next one medium, it's actually really that simple, but I put it as medium because so many students like, we get to composition of functions and they're like, oh no, I don't want to do rational functions again, or it looks so confusing, fractions, I hate fractions, like wham. <laughs> but it's just the same thing we just did here, guys, right? Everybody's usually fairly familiar with polynomials, distributed property, we're comfortable with that. It was, you know, I could have done an easy, easy one, but this one wasn't too bad for most students. Here, when we plug this in, it's gonna look confusing, but let's kind of go through it. So I'm gonna take my g of x, right? This function x plus one divided by two x plus one. And I'm gonna plug that in for this input variable x up here. So when I do that, my f of g of x is gonna look something like this. So I'll just do it like this. So that's gonna be a one over a two times x plus one all over a two x plus one. Okay, now technically this two, you can rewrite this as an over a one, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and distribute that across. And actually you don't technically need to, but I'm just going to do it just for simplicity of our next operation. So when I do that, just make sure you do it over the numerator, not the denominator, or especially don't do it over both. So therefore that's a two x plus two divided by a two x plus one. Okay, now you can't divide out the twos. These terms are separated by addition, so don't be trying to do any of that crazy work. We have it here. Now, how can I simplify this? Well, basically, we don't want a fraction divided by another fraction, right? So we have one divided by this two x plus two over two, um, two x plus one. So what we need to be able to recognize here 
in this case is that I wanna get this fraction or this denominator to one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal. And whatever I do in the denominator to produce equivalent fractions, I need to go ahead and do in the numerator. Okay? So when I go ahead and do that in my denominator as well as my numerator, my denominator now is gonna to go to one, and now that's gonna leave me with a two x plus one divided by a two x plus two. And voila, that was it. It wasn't too bad, it looked a little bit more confusing than doing that, but we got through it. Now let's get to the hard one. And again, you might say, well, why is this one hard, right? You're just doing the same process. You're plugging in the function g of x into the function fx. And you're right. This one can just have a little bit more difficulty if we want to simplify it as much as possible. So let's kind of go through the steps here. If I say f of g of x, right, I'm gonna plug g of x into f of x. So when I go ahead and do that, I have a nine minus parentheses, x squared minus nine quantity squared. One thing I want you to notice is when I did this input, notice how I always use parentheses, right? That's very, very important because that allowed me to preserve my operations to make sure that I was doing the arithmetic correct. That's one thing that a lot of students will make the mistakes on. They don't put parentheses and then they square the nine and like subtract the x squared or something like that. Don't do that. Make sure you use parentheses when you are replacing a input variable with a, a number or with an, another, another function. It's always important to use those parentheses. Okay, so now what we have here, we don't wanna worry about the squared yet or this minus until we square this function, okay? Because the squared is x squared minus nine quantity squared. Now I did that over here and I'm worried that we're not gonna have enough room. So I am just gonna go ahead and do this again in my head. Hopefully you can follow this exact same process, right? It's x squared times x squared, which is x to the fourth, x squared times negative nine right, which would give you a negative nine x squared twice, so that's gonna be negative 18 x squared, and negative nine times negative one is a positive 81. But let's go ahead and let's see if we have an extra room for there and I can show my work at the end. So we have nine minus, again, keeping the parentheses because I'm just multiplying this out. That's my x to the fourth minus an 18 x squared, and that's plus an 81. Okay, now I'm done with this. Now I can go ahead and distribute this negative to each and every one of my terms. So now I have a nine minus x to the fourth plus an 18x minus an 81, all right? So, well, let's go and simplify this, right? I can combine the nine with the negative 81. That's gonna give me a negative 72. Let's see here. So this is a negative x to the fourth minus x to the fourth, let's see, plus an 18x, and then this would be a minus a 72. And now what I wanna see is like technically that's correct, right? But let's see if we can simplify this any further. Can I maybe go ahead and factor this down? I can't distribute the square root across each one of those terms, but I could, could I factor that out? Well, I know I could factor out a negative, right? So let's do that first. Negative um, x to the fourth minus 18x squared plus a 72. And I see what two numbers multiply to give me 72, but add to give me a negative 18. Oh, that's gonna be an 18 squared. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that actually, that was that supposed to be squared? That was supposed to be squared. I dropped my squareds. There you go. Yep, that does work. So yeah, I can actually factor this. Six times 12 multiplies to give me 72. And negative six times negative 12 gives me a 72. And negative six plus a negative 12 gives me an 18. So therefore, I can further simplify this times a x squared minus a uh, six times a x squared minus a 12. Now again, did you have to go all that way? Did your teacher tell you that? It all depends on the directions, right? But I wanted to go over something where you could do some extra further steps to make it more and more difficult. Because yes, the first step, guys, notice was all the same. And it doesn't matter how crazy of a problem it looks, it's all the same. But the difficulty comes into sometimes the numbers or the operations or how much you have to simplify your own functions. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you want more examples of functions or compositions, then check out the next videos I have for you here. Cheers.